Hey, you can't come in here yet. Excuse me? You need to go buy these first. Saying that, my mother in law Laura handed me a piece of paper which had a list on it. Is she asking me to actually get all the things in this list? You better hurry up, okay? My name is Alice and I am a 32 year old housewife. I got recently married to my husband, Tim. I met him at a blind date, but he approached me aggressively and we started dating, and then we got married. I was surprised at the fact that we got married within six months of dating. But considering our ages, I thought it was better to make the decision to marry him quickly. One of the reasons people were really surprised at my decision to get married so soon to Tim was because of the man I had dated before my husband. My ex, Kurt, and I had been dating since our freshman year of college and had been together for about 12 years. We lived together for a long time and people around us were always teasing both of us about when we would get married. I assumed that I would probably end up marrying Kurt too. But, out of the blue, Kerr had suddenly dumped me. I know this is very selfish of me, but I want you to break up with me. What? Why are you saying this so suddenly? I'm sorry, but I can't imagine a future with you anymore, Alice. Are you being serious? How could you even say that after 12 years of dating, Kurt? I'm so sorry, but we can't go out anymore. No matter what I said to Kurt, he insisted that he wanted to break up without giving me any good reasons. And I was just so angry that in the end, I agreed to break up with him. The first few months after the breakup were really rough for me, as I felt like I had wasted my precious 20s because of him. I drank so much that my friends were worried about me, and to top it all off, as I was also drunk, I began to pick up any guys I could find, and seeing this, my friends rushed to stop me, and forced me to take a taxi back home. Seeing me like that, my friend thought that if I continued like that, it would be a bad idea. So, she set me up with a blind date, where I met my current husband, Tim. My husband is a man known to be elite, as he graduated from a prestigious university, and he was working for a major corporation. He is two years older than me, and his parents told him that it was time for him to bring someone home for him to get married to, so he was looking for his marriage partner. And he aggressively approached me, so I fell for him easily. Looking back now, I regret that I could have made a more logical decision instead of just deciding superficially, but my husband had a great family and personal background. It didn't look that bad, so I guess I had no choice but to be deceived by him. Besides, to someone who was dumped after going out for 12 years, a partner like him for a marriage was just perfect at that time for me. All of these reasons and with that timing, this made me decide to marry my husband. When I married Tim, he asked me to fully focus on being a housewife. I liked my job that I was working at, but not so much that I wanted to continue it against my husband's will. So, that's why I became a full-time housewife. From then on, I supported my husband by doing my best at all the house chores. So, I think our marriage was going well in its own way. But, at the same time, there were times where I felt really bored of it too. Not working meant that I had so much time on my hands as a housewife. If I thought like that, then probably I'm more the type where I like to be busy working away. But, since I got married and became a full-time housewife, I thought I should properly do my part for my husband. And so the days passed by in the blink of an eye, and a year had passed since we got married. Since then, nothing had changed so much, and we continued to go about our daily lives as usual. In my husband's family, he is the youngest as he has two elder sisters, Rachel and Julia, and his sisters are very friendly and nice to me, and they would often come over to our house to visit. But my husband would always make an unhappy face when Rachel and Julia comes over to visit us. Rachel and Julia were kind, but they were also very caring and reliable, 
and whenever my husband did something, they would get very angry at him. So, maybe because of that, my husband gets a little nervous when Rachel and Julia were around. But I had never seen Rachel or Julia getting angry at Tim like that, so when he told me about that part, I didn't take him that serious about it. Then, as another year was about to end, I received a phone call from my mother in law, Laura, all of a sudden. Hello, Laura, you called me all of a sudden. So, did something happen? You and Tim should come visit me this New Year's. Pardon me? You didn't come last year, right? So that's why you should come this year. I'll show you how to spend the New Year's in our house. Saying just that, Laura hung up the phone. Who was it from? It was from your mother. She wants us to visit her for the New Year's. Well, it's true. We didn't get to go last year. It's been a while since we went, so I guess we should go then. I thought that I was going to spend a relaxing time at home for this New Year's. I thought that I would be drinking beer, watching the TV, and taking it easy during the New Year's holidays. I had no idea that I would be going to Laura's house. And to have her contact us on Christmas Eve, with only a week or so to go until the New Year's. Originally, we had not visited my parents in law that much. And that's because my husband didn't want to visit them frequently. Last year, I did ask him if we didn't have to go during Christmas and New Year's or not, but he refused, saying things like, It's okay, my family doesn't really expect a lot out from us. Well, I think it was probably because he would have more chances to see his sisters if we visited at that time. So, that's why we would visit them every month or so on a day when there was nothing going on. I was a little depressed about visiting my in laws for the New Year's. It's because I had a feeling that Laura did not like me very much. When I visited Laura's house, she always talked only to Tim and treated me as if I was not there. My father in law, Jim, would talk to me so that I wouldn't feel unwanted. But it was not uncommon for Laura to not even look at me once. When I talked to my husband about it before, he just said, It's probably just your imagination. You're too self conscious. And the conversation ended. So I can't really rely on my husband regarding Laura. So what should I do this coming New Year's? But since Jim will be there and Rachel and Julia will probably be there, so I guess I won't have to feel too horrible. So I decided not to worry too much about it. And the New Year's Eve came in no time. My husband and I finished cleaning our own house in the morning, had lunch, and drove to Jim and Laura's house. My in law's house is two hours away from ours. So we arrived there around 2 p.m. When I got out of the car, I noticed that Jim's car was not there. Worried about his absence, I asked my husband where he had gone, and he told me that Jim was probably picking up Rachel and Julia. I was relieved to hear that, and my husband and I went to the front door and pressed the doorbell. Yes, I'll open the door soon. Laura called out, and a few minutes later, the front door opened. Oh, hello! Thank you for coming here all the way. Welcome back. Laura, it's so nice to see you. Laura glanced at me, smiled only at Tim, and said, Come, come, come on in. There's cake and tea. Let's eat. She did it again. This is how she would ignore me. Feeling a little uncomfortable, I tried to go inside the house. But then, Laura stood in front of me. Hey, you can't come in here yet. Excuse me? You need to go buy these first. Saying that, my mother in law Laura handed me a piece of paper which had a list on it. There were many ingredients listed on the paper, including beef, lettuce, tomatoes, mushrooms, beer, and so on. Is she asking me to actually get all the things in this list? You better hurry up, okay? Oh, uh, um, where is the supermarket around here? When I asked her that, Laura looked annoyed. It's your fault that you rarely show up here, isn't it? If you came here often, you would know where the supermarket is, wouldn't you? Check where the supermarkets are by yourself. Okay. 
Then what about the food expenses? Shall I just pay for it and ask you to pay back after? When I said that, Laura's eyes widened and she became angry. You! You rarely come visit my house, but you want me to pay for it? I can't believe you! Laura began to shout, so Tim came over to see what was going on. What's wrong, Mom? Oh, Tim, honey, Alice just tried to make me pay for the groceries. What? Hey, don't annoy Mom like that. You should just pay for that stuff instead. What? But then I'll pay it out from our family budget, is that okay with you? Huh? Pay it from your credit card. Don't pay it from our family budget. No way. Just hurry up and go. We're about to have our tea time, so don't ruin it. Saying that, Laura slammed the front door on me loudly. How unbelievable. I was so angry at Laura's attitude, as well as the mama's boy husband and his action. I was so mad that I crumpled up the list, threw it right in front of the front door, and got in the car to go home. On the way home, I stopped at a supermarket and bought some amazing appetizers, steak, and beer. I arrived home at 5 p.m., so I took a bath to relax and drank the cold, delicious beer while eating the appetizers by myself from about 6 p.m. I was enjoying my own time and I was watching TV while getting a little bit tipsy. Suddenly, I looked over at my phone, which I had put on silent, to see if my husband had called. But there was no phone call or even a text message from my husband, even though I had come home without shopping. For some reason, that made me angry too. I was getting irritated, so I decided to distract myself by eating the delicious steak. As I was eating my steak, the doorbell rang all of a sudden. And as I was thinking who could it be at this hour and open the door, I saw my in-laws and Tim standing there. To my surprise, Rachel began to apologize by saying, I'm sorry for my stupid mother and brother. Both Laura and Tim's eyes were bright red. This was not because they were drunk or anything, but because they were yelled at by Rachel, Julia, and Jim, and they were probably crying. Being forced by Rachel and Julia, Tim and Laura began to apologize. Well, they sounded like they had to apologize because they were forced to. After, I took Tim into the house and the in-laws left. As soon as my husband saw that his sisters and his father were gone, he immediately became angry, saying, Why didn't you cover for me? He continued to complain about it, but I just ignored him. And a few days later, I met my high school friends for the first time in a while and had lunch with them. But, on the way home, I saw my husband having an affair with another woman. He was walking arm in arm with a young woman. I quickly took a photo of the two of them from the shadows and sent it to my husband over text message asking him what this was all about. Then, he read the message, but he didn't reply back and ignored the text message. As I waited for my husband to return home, angry at him for not replying back to me, he brought back his lover and Laura with him. Laura and his lover came in without my permission. Then, Laura began to say, This woman is much more suitable for my son than you, so you should leave my son. She even said, Because you were unworthy, my son ended up having an affair, so there will be no alimony. Tim also took advantage of the situation and said, It's your fault. It's not my fault, okay? His lover was grinning with a victorious look on her face. Then, my husband brought out the signed divorce papers. I pretended to be upset and said, Hey, give me some time to think about it, and walked out. My husband thought that I was panicking, so he grinned and said, Come back soon, we'll be waiting for you. I went into a cafe and immediately called Rachel and Julia about it. They both came right away, and I played them what Tim and Laura had said to me, which I had recorded secretly. Both Rachel and Julia was so angry and said to me, Please send that recording to our father as well. And after sending it, the three of us then went back to the house where Tim, Laura, and Tim's lover was. My husband and Laura were so surprised that Rachel and Julia had also arrived that they fell off their chairs. You! That's enough! Yeah! 
We're always angry at you, but how can we get you to understand that what you're doing is wrong here? Both Rachel and Julia got mad at Tim first. And soon after, Rachel and Julia also got mad at Laura. This is what happens when you spoil him, Mom. I mean, what is wrong with you? What kind of nerve do you have to approve your own son's affair? Both Tim and Laura were frightened and tried to blame on Tim's lover. Then, both Rachel and Laura put their faces close to Tim's lover and glared at her. Tim's lover got so scared of them that she became teary-eyed and trembled, saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Rachel and Julia then made her husband promise by saying, You will get a divorce, Tim, but you must pay the alimony to Alice. Well, there was no way not to pay for alimony when Tim even admitted that he was having an affair by himself. Then, as I was signing the divorce papers, Laura's phone rang. Apparently, she received a text message from Jim. Oh my god, what shall I do? Jim is saying that he's going to divorce me. Laura was panicking and clung desperately to my husband with tears in her eyes. But Tim had to pay alimony to me because of Rachel and Julia, so he couldn't afford to worry about his own mother right now. Well, don't ask me about it. I don't even have the capacity to look after you. That was what he was saying to Laura. After that, we successfully got divorced. By the way, Tim's lover disappeared from Tim after paying alimony because she was too scared of Rachel and Julia. And it seems that Jim really divorced Laura too, and now she had forced herself into Tim's place so that she could live with him. They are now living together and Tim is the one paying off the alimony and cover living expenses for both Laura and him. But the affair was discovered by someone at work somehow, and word spread through Tim's company, and he was given a pay cut, so apparently he is living poorly. It's what both Tim and Laura deserves. Meanwhile, Rachel had asked me if I wanted to join her company, because someone quit at her place, so I went in for a job interview. They hired me as a full-time employee, and I am now working hard with Rachel. And both Rachel and Julia took me to a bar after work to celebrate for getting a new job and divorcing Tim. You know, this is our go-to place. They've had a new bartender for a couple of years now, and he's nice and handsome. Wow, really? Is he a young man? No, I think he's about your age, Alice. He's in his early 30s, I think. While having this conversation with them, we arrived at the bar. I followed Rachel and Julia and sat at the counter. Welcome! The bartender said that, so I looked at who he was. K Kurt! Uh, Alice! To my surprise, there he was, my ex-boyfriend who dumped me after 12 years of dating. So I said, excuse me, I should head home to Rachel and Julia, and I was about to leave. Then Kurt said, wait, and stopped me. Can you give me a minute? There's something I need to tell you. Okay. With that, we went outside to talk. I'm really sorry about what happened with us. It's okay now. I was pretty shocked that you suddenly dumped me, but it's all in the past now. I mean, you're a bartender now, right? Did you quit your job? No, I'm still working at the company. Oh, so you're doing this as a side job? Why are you doing that? I was just trying to explain about that. Actually, my father got very sick two years ago and he can no longer work at his factory. What? Without him, the factory wouldn't run well and the medical expenses for his illness were pretty expensive. And at that time, the situation was really bad back at home. As a result, we had no choice but to close my father's factory. We were left with a debt of several thousand dollars. Plus, my father's medical expenses were still expensive. So I couldn't really ask you to marry me being in that situation. Because it would be so embarrassing for you to have a husband covered in debt as soon as we get married, right? I didn't want to make you unhappy, so that's why I just dumped you back then, Alice. But I'm really sorry for making you feel horrible. 
Well, I thought that I would never see you again, so now that we've miraculously met again, I felt I had no choice but to tell you. You idiot. Huh? Then you should have talked to me first about it. You just left me without giving me any reasons. So do you know how hard it was for me to accept that? I'm s sorry. Well, it can't be helped now, but are you still in debt? I'll finally finish paying it off this month. It's a huge relief, you know. And my father's discharged from the hospital for now. Well, I'm really glad to hear that. You know, Alice, I won't say that I want to start over with you right now, so will you just be my friend again? Yeah, sure. We walked back into the bar together, and then seeing that, Rachel and Julia both cheered for me happily. In the end, Rachel, Julia, and I made Kurt buy us a round of drinks, saying that it was his fault that I married to Tim, which ended up in divorce as a joke. After that, I started seeing Kurt regularly, and as time went on, we gradually grew closer and started dating again. Then, Kurt proposed to me and we finally got married. All my friends and family around me congratulated me. Even Rachel and Julia told me that I was a hundred times more suitable with Kurt than Tim. After that, we had a baby, and Kurt, our son Theo, and I have been living together happily. I would like to continue to make happy memories with my husband and son, whom I love very much. Both Rachel and Julia are very cool. I would love to meet sisters like them. I'm glad Alice was able to cut off from Tim and Laura. And the faithful reunion with Kurt was also very touching. Please continue to live happily with the family, Alice. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. We hope to see you in our next video.